going on everyone and welcome on back to the channel thank you so much for being here and sitting down sipping on something alongside with me on this beautiful I was trying to do alliteration with all the S's. Anyways, Don't Interrupt the Sorrow is what we are going to be listening today to today. Uh, Joni Mitchell, of course, The Hissing of Summer Lungs. Uh, so yeah, I got the song pulled up. Let's go ahead and give it a listen. We'll talk about it after. Hold on, let me move my wire here. Sometimes I have things in the way here that you can't see, but they're in my way. Trust me. Don't Interrupt the Show. Don't Interrupt the Sorrow. Here we go. Prophet witches keep a light. A room full of glasses. He says, Your notches, liberation doll. And he chains me with that serpent to that Ethiopian wall. Lovely bass playing. Anima rising, queen of queens. Wash my guilt of Eden. Wash and balance me. And I'm arising, uprising in me tonight. She's a vengeful little goddess with an ancient crown to fight. I like that. Truth goes up in vapors, the steeples lean. Winds of change, patriarchs, snug in your Bible belt green. Up the chimney like childhood Santa Claus. The good slaves love the good book. A rebel loves the cow. Lots of subtlety in the instruments that constantly come around. Oh, that is a beautiful guitar line. What I like about this track a lot is its ever-changing landscape. The music that is surrounding Joni, besides her singing, which is of course a focal point, her poetry, her prose, it's always on the nose. But if you look up underneath where the light don't goes, there's a lot of subtlety in the musical ideas that are taking place. The straightforward, relatively strumming of the guitar to move everything along, but it's all the different layerings and 
and layers of sediment that are being put down on this particular foundation. And I really love how that's being played. A lot of the actual music that's being played, it makes me think of listening to David Sylvian's solo stuff. In the sense of there's one or two elements that keep chugging along and keep moving at a particular pace, kind of as that foundation. And then everything else starts to surround itself and kind of grow around that. So what I mean is that, for example, in this track, there's a lot of different stuff, but the the electro the electric guitar, not electronic guitar, but the electric guitar that kind of comes in crying with the weeping, long sustained note kind of rising. That comes in very, very gorgeously. Just a subtle instrument, just a subtle texture and flavor. Then uh, the the percussion and the drums, the hi hat that comes in, for example, like a, a few sporadic moments, and then it's done. It just comes in at just the right time. The way that the bass moves with everything. Uh, it sounds like there was, um, maybe not guitar, but something else in there as well. I can't quite tell you what it was. Uh, the electric piano, that sounds like it kind of strewn through as well. Like there's this, all these little elements that come back and forth, kind of playfully dancing in the background of the music and then kind of backing off, coming in for a brief step and backing off. And I think that it's just a very playful but atmospheric way to build subtlety in the music. And I think that... The band did a fantastic job uh, with that. And I see that uh, Robin Ford is playing the Dobro in this particular track. Is that how you pronounce it? Dobro? I feel like that'd be a good name for like a bakery. Uh, <laughs> a bakery that was started by two brothers. Dobros. Get it? Dobro. Don't interrupt the sorrow. Darn right. In flames our prophet witches be polite. A room full of glasses, he says, you're not his liberation doll. And he chains me with that serpent to that Ethiopian wall. I'm not sure what he's talk what, what she's talking about, but in flames are prophet witches. I like that. Even through tribulation and trial, our prophet is witching on, our prophet is speaking, prophesying to us. Be polite, don't interrupt them. Change me to that serpent today. I don't know. Anima rising. Isn't that the female part of... Hold on. Anima and animus, right? Anima is the female part of... Ooh, it's like something... Your psyche? I don't know. I could I could click it. I'm not going to. Queen of queens. Wash my guilt in Eden. Wash and balance me. Anima rising, uprising in me tonight. She's a vengeful little goddess with an ancient crown to flight. I'm pretty... Let's click it. Anima, appropriate name. Anima is a complex word. Latin meaning the vital principle, soul, spirit, the soul of an animating principle, blah, blah. Anima is the term for the inner feminine part of the male personality or the inner self of the person. That's what I'm looking for and that's what I'm thinking. So her, her inner femininity is rising her inner psyche and she describes that as a vengeful little goddess with an ancient crown to flight. Truth goes up in vapors, the steeples lean. Winds of change, patriarch snug in your Bible belt dreams. God goes up the chimney like childhood Santa Claus. If the good old slaves love the good book, a rebel loves a cause. I'm leaving on the 115, you're darn right. Since I was 17, I'd have no one over me. He says, anima rising, so what? Petrified wood process, tall timber to, down to rock. I'm really getting like, I feel like Joni knows what she's talking about. And she's putting her feelings and her thoughts into this slightly cryptic writing. Uh, but I'm not quite sure. Like, I see that he's dismissive of perhaps what she's feeling when he says, Anima rising, so what? So that the, the male, the masculine is stomping down, putting down the feminine and her in the process. Don't interrupt the sorrow. Darn right. I like how she reaffirms after like, darn right. He says, we walked on the moon. You be polite. Don't let up the sorrow, death and birth and death and birth and death and birth. He says, bring that bottle kindly and I'll pad your purse. I got a head full of quandary and a mighty, mighty thirst. 17 glasses, wine, rind, milk of the Madonna clandestine. He don't let up the sorrow. He lies and he cheats. It takes a heart like Mary's these days when your man gets weak. So... I think that this song, even though I don't understand a lot of it, I feel like the, the message, the thought behind it, the feeling at least, is female empowerment, don't need no man. When you feel your anima rising, when you feel that inner feminine power coming up, don't let anyone put it down. Be yourself, do yourself, handle yourself. 
Don't let up the sorrow. He lies and he cheats. It takes a heart like Mary's these days when your man gets weak. You got to have a, a divine, a holy heart these days when your man gets weak. When your man gets weak, you better handle it on your own. I think that's kind of what it's talking about here. That's at least what I'm what I'm thinking. I'm I'm feeling pretty good about that. But how do you feel? Let me know in the comments below. Follow me in a few places. Thank you for being here. Come back tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you all later. Bye, guys.